get that, but that's the yeah. idea. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a little bit on. See, when it's new like this, it gets, it picks up moisture. Can you see that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the first thing you know, what you have to do is you take, I use, I call it the white paper treatment. Okay. And you do it against any kind of a... Flat surface, piece of glass? Yeah, a anything. Uh, for instance, that door, I'll do it, nothing. Or tabletop? Yeah. And you put a piece of white paper? I would do it with glass. Mm-hmm. And could you show us, on at least on the tabletop, what you would do? Oh. You just go, of course, you do this on a white piece of paper. Right. But I'm just going to give you an idea. And what does that actually do? Well, it works on that moisture, and it dries it up. And also the fibers is pushing sure, back? Sure, sure. You want to push the fibers back into the reed? Well, that's the way you put it. It's all right, but you know, I know it's me. I go along. <laughs> okay, you used to explain it to me that way. Yeah. yeah. And you, you, the moisture, you're getting rid of the excess moisture, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So now it should play a little bit better. That's all without the register key. Yeah. That's just the overtone that you're getting. Yeah. Is that high C? I don't, I don't have the perfect pitch. <laughs> That's the C. You also talked about the facing, where the reed and the mouthpiece yeah. touch. If you go too close to the edge, it'll crawl. That's, now if it's too far, it's hideous. <laughs> it's not musical. And the other one is not musical, but it's nothing. So, here. So you should be able to whisper it. Because, hello, hello. I now I want to do that. And then when you get louder, you take more mouthpiece. Sure. Just like in the... But the very fact that you can come down to that, you can on the flu, you used to show me and the other students that were in my class and, and all of the other students, you used to take the mouthpiece off the clarinet. Mm -hmm. can, we do, can we do that? And, yeah. and take the mouthpiece off the clarinet. Yeah. And you used to do a exercise to play the scales on the, on the mouthpiece. Yeah, on, on, on the saxophone. On the saxophone, too. Well, yeah. Can you demonstrate that for us? Sure. It's an old trumpet thing, you know? Say brass. This is something that brass players use yeah. to develop flexibility, <clears throat> and you feel that it's important for a reed player to be able to do the same. Show us, I noticed that you're moving the mouthpiece in and out. Could you turn yeah. to the side and have yeah. the camera? Let's see how that works on the saxophone sure. now. Okay. The saxophone mouthpiece. It's the mm. same principle. Sure.
Excellent. So it gives you an idea that if you are going to play something on the horn, you have to hear before it comes out of the horn. And they, I don't want to say, you read, I have magazines that are sent to me, and they talk about the diaphragm. Well, it's not so much the diaphragm, but it's the ear. The ear, the ear keeps everything working properly. Sure. Joe, show us some of the principles that you have. Now, that's the saxophone. <laughs> okay. With the mouth, the, talk about the, the, the chewing that you used to talk mm -hmm. about, and also as far as keeping your, your upper lip flexible. And you know, I used to practice with my lip off the complete, like this. Rather than, that's not good. So the top teeth and lip are receiving. Right. Could you talk about the receiving, the, the pressure coming up rather than going down? Or the chewing motion, or X, as you used to say. I feel that my teeth are just like the hammers of the piano. All right, now the then, wood part of the hammer. Yeah. And the lip is, is what? The felt. The felt glued to the hammer on the piano. But what strikes it, it's the hammer. So what's our hammer? X. 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 The lower teeth. Ba, 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 ba. The lower teeth. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. You get the most projection that way. Sure. What would happen if you just used your lip and you didn't use your teeth? You can't. You can <laughs> just like this. In two minutes, you'd be, and you'd have a sore throat and all kinds of things. What is the exercise that you learned from the flute? Well, F down, E down, E flat down. Without the register key, correct? The, yeah, they don't have the register key. Could you demonstrate that for us? Sure. And I know that you used to teach me that when you practice that way, the intensity of the higher register is, is stronger. Well, it's a question of you hear it, and then it sends a message down in here which you'll never, never know. Joe, I want to continue and make sure that our audience understands the principle of chewing, or the syllable X. Mm -hmm. Would you show us more on that? So you're actually what you call chewing. Yeah. 